Isn't it amazing how quickly things change and how fast they change? So we've got two subfields of machine learning. We have generative AI and we have predictive AI. And this over here, this was most machine learning, and it still is. Right now, we're still talking, uh, this is still 90% of all real-world machine learning. And, and many people think that it will be, that this, this is going to change. Um, we'll see. I think I disagree. Um, over here, we've got Gen AI. We've got the famous chat GPT moment and LLMs and what they've been able to do. All right, again, that's in the real world. Let's just say RW for real world. In the real world, this is very small. This is like a, we'll make a little small man. <laughs> this is a very small part of all real world machine learning. However, I think that's, that's going to change. And what I find fascinating is the speed at which it's going to change, right? So I think I'm going to have this video in six months from now, and I don't think this 90% is safe. I think he's in trouble. So I think there's going to be a lot more uh, Gen AI being used when I talk to my friends in high places at Google, Microsoft, and Amazon. And some other places. I have some friends in Northrop Grumman, some big banks, and places I've worked before. But I still reach out to them. I'm like, hey, are you using this shit? Uh, what are you doing with this? Um, they'll tell me. What do we do? I don't know. Either way, there are some commonalities if you want to move into either of these roles, right? What is, so SQL, over here we have, this is SQL, right? Over here, this is not SQL, right? Uh, what's interesting about Gen AI is, all these LLMs, or this is all documents. These are all docs. So it's all text-based. And text is not held in relational databases. These documents are unstructured data that are held on drives. Right? SQL, different. We've got relational databases and we've got data warehouses. And for many people that are coming out of college, this is a sticking point. This is very difficult. This is way more involved than people think. They get into interviews and you ask them the basics about SQL and they just look dumbfounded. Like, you know, I had a class on databases, but I had no idea that my first 10 questions were going to be about databases. Well, first 10, it's more like a first 30. However, over here, we don't have this. Over here, there is no SQL. These are documents. So will that help those with a master's degree who aren't skilled in SQL, but who are skilled in working with documents? Working with documents is easy as hell move into roles. Now, I don't think so. Again, I've been doing this for a decade now, more than a decade if we include business intelligence. And I've never seen any anyone get hired that was entry level, like out of college or even, even someone making a, a move from another career. It's never seen it happen, right? The, the, all these people that have worked in all these analytical roles, business intelligence, uh, machine learning, um, all these roles, they came from somewhere, right? They had experience around four to five years doing it somewhere else. What's that mean? So if you're gonna, if you're still working on the ML path, and a lot of people are, right? And honestly, I think a lot of people are that don't know they are. Like, so if you're gonna be a data engineer, I think in the future, a lot of data engineering are gonna have hooks into Gen AI, right? Um, we'll talk more about that later. But I, I think that's, I think uh, someone said, I forget who said it the other day, one of the, the top guys, uh, he, he said, listen, all of us are going to be working with AI or for AI in the near future. And that was interesting, right? Interesting take. If you're going to become a machine learning engineer, uh, you're going the data analyst route, the DA route, uh, analyst. This is still the preferred approach. Right, because if you get a job here and you're working with structured data, like you're working with uh, you know tables and everything, and you can build, you can do the end-to-end -end machine learning pipeline over here. Over here, it's just much easier, right? Because you don't have data sourcing, you don't have data cleansing over here. Now you do. You've got to go get the documents, and you may have to do some training on your company's internal data, right? Because you're going to incorporate that data into the LLM. But it sure as shit is not as hard as sourcing data over here, going through these databases writing the SQL, pulling out the code, pulling in Excel documents, um, scrubbing other data sources. The, this, this over here is a real pain in the ass. What do you do? You don't. You just continue on the path that you're on, right? Uh, you want to be a 
agent unit build agents because the direction of the field is agentic workflows. Um, you're still going to have to become a machine learning engineer, and your niche is going to be uh, building agents, building swarms. All right. So I just want to give you a little insight about the, the two, the division here and where we're headed. And it is an interesting time in the space. All right. So head down to the comment section and sign up for my newsletter. It is free. It is free. It is free. And I promise if you're going to work in a data role, you're going to get some things out of it.